eight. Please put your hands together for the beautiful, chocolate, immaculately wonderful Kenyo Latata. I don't know. I know that you have to say it, so I'll say it. Um, this should be fun. I'm gonna do two poems. One's very short, and then one's a little bit longer. And they're both kind of on the theme of since it's haunted, you know, uh, by memories. They're, I'm glad I went first because I'm sure other people are gonna do this too. But I'm gonna do haunted by, you know, memories of past love. And that kind of stuff. I don't write a lot of those. And sometimes you gotta get it out, you gotta process that stuff, so. And I recently wrote a couple of them. <clears throat> um, yeah, you can follow me though, at Kenyo HQ on the stuff, and then my website is kenyo.org. Super easy. So, check it out if you're interested. If my poetry blows your mind, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> um, so this one's a shorter one. Midnight breakfast in bed. The title. I'm sorry you couldn't wait four more measures for the beat to drop, four more moments for your father's love to be served with eggs and bacon at every moment you wake up. I hope you cross the road, your heart approach, as your heart approached, menacingly toting guns loaded with my love, because it would be a shame for my long lost love to rob you of your joy in the middle of the night. That Woo! introduction nice. into uh, my pain. <laughs> so this is the longer one. I am quitting doing a thing and being done undone by it also. Feeling every step steal a step from the next till that last one pats down miles still outside the city. Stories stacked and filled with people scraping skies and drawing lines jaggedly beneath the horizon. Is this my power? Carving acid from the rain, making ages tongue eras in the movie theater of my mind. Ego watching, popping corn in the cab on the ride home, staring deeply into thick sheets of its own subjectivity dissolving, approaching larger meaning upon the limits of its vision. This is my power, shaman of my own dreams, showing them through the museum of me tumbling down corridors where I met myself and alienate its spaceship and reconstitute the amendments of my fear. Speech like laser beams through butter and sex in the children's section of the library at 3 a.m. with elephants replacing God, mocking the Sistine Chapel, awakening the part of my soul that knows the future and stored the past like memories, written in the code of my Michelangelo, reaching for a personification of God that's just beneath the reality of my own raunchy singularity, broad and personal, now then, my love, bordered by magic, you inhabit a silhouette that makes time in verse upon the earth, reminding me I'm losing you ever since our first kiss. Time rolled back again, and I watched myself fall back out of the place of our love. I watched you cry, realizing three months in, we'd begun to never know each other and that these final three years would rob us of our humanity till we become three lovers, sunlight, and unholy regret, haunting one another's echoes of some long, deeply embedded, reoccurring memory of failure. Will you curse me for never returning, for setting us both free, for never saying us again, my phantom limb, my connection that's become just me talking to myself, replastering my soul, but the plaster never left the can, and I'm passed out where the oven used to be, dreaming of waking up to my whiskey and smoke and water and Advil and the numb hum of Netflix and motels, the dull ring of friends coming to visit my ears, laughing with my belief that I'll laugh for real one day. My future joy is a poltergeist also, causing the faults within my soul to rip across one another and light briefly, light briefly erupts. So one day, Mount Helena 
money and fame, beasts become my actual mountain of God, and my right hand, my East Africa, becomes stunningly whole again. That's that poem. Thank you guys.